Good evening, Trinidad Tobago. Welcome to another edition of Scoreboard here on ACTN. It's always a pleasure to be in your company every Tuesday evening between the hours of 8 and 9 where we bring something relevant, um, revealing to you in sports. Um, today we're going to be talking rugby. I know that, you know, we have not highlighted rugby for a while on uh, ACTN, but we do, we're going to do it today and we're going to do it with a very charming lady. And first of all, let me take the opportunity to in, uh, introduce to you Maria Thomas. Maria, it's a pleasure to have you here on ACTN. Thank you very much. It's um, a pleasure to be here. The wait was worth it. <laughs> um, let's dive straight into to, to, to rugby. I mean, looking at mm -hmm. you, um, one will not, you know, look and say, well, okay, you're a rugby player because mm -hmm. we look at rugby players as these huge, muscular people, mm -hmm. right? But nevertheless, let's talk about Maria Thomas. You were born abroad, you lived abroad for a while. Yes, Canada. Yeah, let's, let's start with, you know, Maria from an early age. All right, well, I grew up in a lot of sports. Mm -hmm. um, probably the first was ballet. Mm -hmm. I did football for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And in high school, I played basically every sport. Things had their season, so mm -hmm. you could continue playing all these mm -hmm. sports um, throughout high school. When I went to university, actually, someone who lived with me in residence, Tamara Dixon, mm -hmm. she said to me one day, Maria, you need to play rugby. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, well, why? And she's like, just trust me, you need to play rugby. Mm -hmm. And I found out um, another fellow student at the university mm -hmm. was playing for London St. George's. Mm -hmm. And off I went to that training session. And that was pretty much it. I went from a multi-sport person to a rugby player. <laughs> What can you remember at what age you started? Um, 18. 18. And you played for a club abroad, right? You were, yes. were in, in USA or? Canada. Canada. So you started your career in Canada. Yes, at 18. So I started late. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, what was, how long did you stay in Canada? And how long did the career of rugby, you know, stay with you abroad? Um, well, I played for London St. George's while I was in London. When I moved away, that um, stopped. So I had a little hiatus where I mm -hmm. wasn't playing rugby. However, every time I would come to Trinidad to visit my family, mm -hmm. my cousin was playing okay. for UE. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my mom would call and say, don't let Maria go to rugby. I don't want her to get hurt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and my aunt would watch me and I would be running out the door to follow my cousin to go and, and play rugby with UE. And that was my introduction to the sport in Trinidad. What was the first experience like for you actually in a rugby game? Um, well, I have a memory from... This is playing in Canada, mm -hmm. and it would have been one of the first games. My coach was on the sideline. It was a uh, ruck, mm -hmm. and I played flanker at that time. This was 15s. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, the person is on the ground. I'm in the position of the ruck. I'm probably not being very, I'm not doing that much at this point. Mm -hmm. And my coach was screaming his head off at the sideline, mm -hmm. telling me, Maria, rake her, rake her. What, 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 what? Rake, you're not allowed to rake anymore. Okay. Not right. allowed to rake anymore. Yeah, but what it was? What it was? <laughs> Raking is when you drag your foot across the person because they're on the ground. Okay. So okay. when you go to the ground, physical you have to, contact. Yeah. So you okay. have to release the ball. Mm -hmm. Um, you have a short, a few seconds to release the ball. Mm -hmm. And uh, back in those days, you know, if if I hadn't released the ball, you'd give them a reminder, mm -hmm. which would be raking. Mm -hmm. Um which is so now... Any part of the body, we, you could... You could um, uh, anything on the ground is the ground. Okay. So the person on the ground is considered the ground? Yes. Okay. And so you would you would rake as you were driving over mm -hmm. to push back their team mm -hmm. and gain possession of the ball. And from that moment, he mm -hmm. would just... That, w that was my job. If they touched the ball, mm -hmm. I touched them. So I had probably not the greatest... Um, view of all the aspects of the game, mm -hmm. but my one job that he assigned to me, mm -hmm. I made sure I did it. <laughs> when did you realize that, okay, rugby is going to be your profession? Um, I realized that I was a rugby player in continuing to play other sports. Mm -hmm. So one of the companies I worked for, they had a, a rec football team. And I remember my brain trying to tell my body to stop because it was football and not rugby. Mm -hmm. And it was in a park. It wasn't even a proper field as I, you know, banged someone into a tree. Mm -hmm. um, tried basketball again. I, I played basketball quite a bit. Um, I was fouled out very quickly. <laughs> um, 
I think I've, I've even collided to my opponent in badminton. So in badminton. Yes. But you are separated by a. Uh, I know. I know. Okay. It seems like it yeah. shouldn't happen that way, but somehow I manage. So I try and stick to rugby now. Okay, so you left Canada and you came back to Trinidad. Yes. Take me through that journey. Um, well, it was really wonderful having the UE Rugby Club mm -hmm. because that was something that was a constant for me. Mm -hmm. Moving back, there were a lot of different things going on, different jobs, moving different places, and that rugby was consistent. Mm -hmm. And all of the players and the people involved with the team, we were, like, and are very much a family. Mm -hmm. So I remember um, I was discouraged from traveling because I wouldn't know how to find my way mm -hmm. and I wanted to travel because I want to be independent mm -hmm. so I'd find my way up to training and they will always make sure that I got home we would all hop into the maxi it'd be a big trip it's almost like a team excursion mm -hmm. to to go home and that will always stick with me because it wasn't a short way out of their mm -hmm. way mm -hmm. to take me and make sure that I arrive safely um, anytime I've ever needed something advice um, anything at all you know those are people that will always have your back and mm -hmm. that's something about rugby as a community is that the camaraderie is that high that you can go anywhere in the world and say mm -hmm. you know I want to take in a rugby game I want to take a sweat mm -hmm. and you can find rugby players who are going to welcome you and take care of you. Now UE is still your current club? Or yes. You, okay so you are a permanent member of, of the club yes. right? Okay so you start playing with UE you got called up to the national team tell me about what how, how that occurred? All right, it wasn't as direct as that. So when I was playing with UE, they didn't have a women's team. Okay. So this is when I was coming on vacation and I would have to get permission to be able to play and that didn't always happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, sometimes it would just be running lines or doing whatever to mm -hmm. be a part of the action on the day. Mm -hmm. When women's rugby started picking up, mm -hmm. um, it, it was suggested I should go and play for a club that had a women's team. So I actually went and I played with Caribs. Mm -hmm. So I played with them for a while and I got injured playing touch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> People say rugby is so rough and violent with all the contact that I would be the one to get injured playing touch. Um, so I had actually quite a bad knee injury mm -hmm. and I was out for three years. So after that, I started saying, okay, you know what? I really, I really do want to make an effort to come to the national team. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to train and get myself ready and, and see what I could do. I mean, all I can do is try out. And at that point, the training would have been enough for me mm -hmm. um, to be a part of any national team in, in any way. It is such an honor that just to be on the field, just to be a body for players to hit a number, to make up mm -hmm. numbers if it was necessary. Um, even that, even if I never made the national team, I could still contribute to our national team, yeah. right? By providing an extra body where needed, mm -hmm. um, somebody else to, to challenge, to train hard. Um, and that was my intention, was getting called up to the national team. I remember going and being a tape monster. I had to tape both my knees, my ankles. I mean, you see my fingers all taped. I was like just a ball of tape every time I had to play, mm -hmm. um, even for training. And as I continued training, obviously, you get stronger. And quite this morning, mm -hmm. I was thinking, you know, I'm feeling, my body's feeling kind of sore because we've been doing so much running mm -hmm. um, this week. And then I realized, actually, my body feels great. A lot of these pains that I was having before, I'm not having them. Um, even a couple months ago, my shoulders and stuff were really hurting me. I had got some nerve damage or something. And um, it was really bothering me, but I've been making sure, like, my diet, obviously, is yeah. something to look at, mm -hmm. exercising, knowing what works for me um, as far as any therapy. But I realized, oh, I'm, I'm not going to massage this every week like I used to be going. And the more I progress, the less assistance I need to be able to perform. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really great gift. I mean, your body is the one body you have for yeah, life. So you have to treat it good. Yes. Mm -hmm. But can you recall when you got called up for the national team and how it, how it, um, it happened? Yes. Um, I made quite a bit of noise about wanting to go to the national team. Uh, you have to be playing for a club mm -hmm. to be eligible. Um, and I spoke with, 
I know some of the coaches and, and people, you know people in the fraternity. Mm. So I went out for the rugby tryout. Mm. Um, I actually, I took time off work just to try and train and get ready for it. Mm. Um, and when they called the training, I didn't receive a phone call. So I thought everyone gets a call. But for the most part, it will go to someone in your club and then they will, it will go to the secretary yeah, of the club yeah. and it'll the information gets mm -hmm. around somehow there was a loophole mm -hmm. and um one of my teammates Malika asked me you know why aren't you coming to training mm -hmm. I was like well I didn't get called to training I didn't I didn't get mm -hmm. called out mm -hmm. you know she's like no I think everyone was supposed to come I said, but it's a national team I'm not just going to show up they have to call me mm -hmm. and you know a few days later I did get the call from our coach Carlton Felix Smokey mm -hmm. And I can still hear his voice on the phone right now because mm -hmm. I, was, I was so excited to have this opportunity. Mm -hmm. Okay, you got called up mm -hmm. for training. Yes. You haven't been selected as yet. No. Tell me about the selection um, part of it. Um, well, initially it and wasn't. For what tournament it was for? Initially it wasn't too difficult because, as I said, mm. I had in my head gone saying, I'm, I will be training. Training okay. with a national squad. That's, all, that's, that's all, yeah. amazing. Okay. Um, but of course, competitive nature, you get working really hard, you mm -hmm. start saying, okay, well, where do I fit in with the rest of the team, things like that, and tournaments will come up, and, and um, yeah, you know, you hope, you hope a little mm -hmm. bit. It wouldn't make sense if you weren't always hopeful to do better. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember there was a tournament that I was to go on, but I had, had a, I had bruised my wrist and wasn't cleared by physio to go. So uh, that, that was the hardest one because to me, it was a bruise. I'd had the x-ray, everything was fine. And, and at the time when the physio had reported to the selections, the physio had said no. So I had to accept that. Um, there was another tournament, a big tournament um, in Ireland, which the team went on. I wasn't selected for that team. I remember staying up. I remember, I think being part of a team, it doesn't matter if you're, if you actually go. Because... Well, I was just about to ask you if you were discouraged in any way, not training and not being selected for, you know, for, for the, the actual... The first tournament yeah. I was because okay. I felt like... Oh, it's because of the injury that um, prevented you from... But that. I didn't even feel it was an injury. Okay. And I was really bothered, but it was such a good experience not going to mm -hmm. the tournament in Ireland mm -hmm. because I never would have known I could feel that excited mm -hmm. for my team. I had butterflies. I remember where I was, I, could, I, don't, I, didn't, I don't have a TV at home or anything. Mm -hmm. So I remember actually calling someone and telling them to put their phone by the TV so that I could listen play by play mm -hmm. because I needed to hear what was going on. I needed to be a part of it. And... I think having that amount of dedication and just caring for your team, I don't mm -hmm. think it should be a selfish endeavor. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and that was really important. I remember when the team came back, going to the airport, being excited to see everyone, you know, the stories. I remember um, Nella brought me a, a keychain, and I, Nella is the first person I remember hitting me in Trinidad. And she hit me this amazing tackle. It was really hard. I couldn't do anything about it. It was totally clean. And I knew from then I was like, if I could play rugby with her, that would be really great. Um, and so was, this token was so important to me and so meaningful. Mm -hmm. So when I did get selected was to go to Rand Tens in Miami. Okay. And that was super exciting. So that was the first time you that actually... Was the, that was my first national cap. Okay. Yeah, yes. Tell me about that game. All right. So we went out on the tournament. I would actually had double duty to do because... I had meetings and things to attend as Secretary of the Union. Okay. So I worked to balance that because I wanted to have the experience of the tour with the team as well. I didn't want to be like, oh, you're off doing different things from the team. Um, what I love about tournaments is we build so much over the period of a tournament. All the teams throughout the Caribbean have a difficulty of competition. So when we go outside, that's when we get really good competition. And that's when we see, okay, this is how stuff starts working. Mm. And we develop very, very quickly. And I think that is so important. And any way we can have more of that mm. is, is very important for our development. Um, another aspect that was super exciting for me was that Tamara Dixon was there and she was playing for Jamaica. Okay. 
that's the person back in Canada, back in university, it was 15 years ago at the time, I think, had said, Maria, you need to play rugby. So you actually and connected with her on the field? And, and, yeah. Yes, yes. Physically, mm -hmm. but <laughs> physically and she, as well. And she was everything. on the opposing team, right? Yes. That has to be an interesting um, experience. It was so great. My favorite mm -hmm. tackle of the whole tournament was hitting her. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and it yeah. was like, you know, do I vote her, whatever. This time when I was in front of her and I saw I was like, well, here, I'm going to get it back now. Mm -hmm. And it was just so wonderful. It was a moment where you just think, wow, mm -hmm. this is my life right now. You know, because you never think when things begin, you don't always think where you're actually going to end up. All right. Yeah. Um, at, we need to take a short break, right? When we come back, I want to continue because um, I'm seeing the excitement and uh, that passion in your uh -huh. face as you speak about your career. Mm -hmm. Viewers, we are, uh, you are watching uh, Scoreboard here on ACTN. We are talking to Maria Thomas uh, Trentabago, national rugby player, and she's telling us all about the lovely sport of rugby. We'll be right back after the short break. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mickey Mo Joseph and I'm training for Ran Sevens. Hi, I'm Jamala Derek and I'm training for Ran Sevens. Hi, I'm Jade Ramjag and I am training for Ran Sevens. I am Patia Paul and I'm training for Ran Sevens. Hi, my name is Nigel Ballington and I'm training for Ran Sevens. Hi, my name is Paola Jack and I'm training for Ran Sevens. Anthony Ford and I'm training for Ran Sevens. I am Ethan Lewis and I'm training for Ran Sevens. My name is Christopher Hudson and I'm training for Ran Sevens. I'm Johnny Appleby and I'm training for Ran Sevens. Welcome to another edition of Scoreboard here on ACT and it's always a pleasure to be in your company every Tuesday evening between the hours of 8 and 9. Welcome back viewers, welcome back to Scoreboard here on ACT. Maria, before the break you were telling me about the tournament in Miami. Yes. How you enjoy tackling your, your opponent who was the person who involved you in the sport of rugby. Yes. And I saw the... In, and the enjoyment in your face mm -hmm. continue yes so that was really monumental for me mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. have that experience and even just seeing how our team grew and how we played we actually we were runners up in the tournament mm. um, for me the experience was so important obviously yes you want to win mm. that is the goal but personally I was, I was really pleased with everything that we saw and all the experiences that I had and how I could develop as not only a player, but as a person. What was the condition after the game between you and that person who got you involved in the sport? Um, you can remember? Well, I, I remember what happened after the tournament, yes. <laughs> we had actually planned we, all this stuff we were going to do. We were going to go, you know, live it up rugby style like back in the day and... We were all staying in the same hotel room, mm. so I hopped up. I had actually, um, I didn't drink prior to the tournament. I told myself I was not going to drink again until I made the national team for a tour, which was ambitious. Um, so, of course, went up there, and I think I had about two and a half light beers and fell asleep watching the games on YouTube. <laughs> so it wasn't as exciting as we okay. had planned. Um, but yeah, it was it was nice to go and see that and and just to to watch what had happened and to see it and be like, yes, this really happened. Um, and then obviously with the rest of the team as well, we were all you know who had the best Wi-Fi connection and how we could look over these things. Mm. Yeah. So that was your first game. So after that, you were, were you a regular starter on a national team? Well, this was the first tournament. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it was actually <laughs> kind of in retrospect where I was like, wait, oh, I didn't get to have a sub. <laughs> um, our coach really takes advantage of our skills mm -hmm. and does a good job of having our starting line, I think. To me, I find we play really well together and the starting line doesn't necessarily mean that... Um, 
you have to start for everything. So I may start okay. sometimes, I might Thank not you. always start. You. But you'll have players who will come in and actually make a huge difference when they come on. Mm. So, At that point of the game. Exactly. Okay. So, you know, if a, a person, to play a whole game, if you're not effective, it might be able to keep up. Mm. Isn't the same as, you know, you have your four minutes that you come in for and score three tries or something like that. Okay. So um, that's obviously, I think, a really important job that our coaches do. And that's to evaluate all of our skills, how we play together, how we play throughout the course of the game. Mm. I find sevens still after, you know, quite some time. It's been a long time since I played 15s. Mm. I still feel like it goes by well, very quickly. 15s is a normal type of rugby. I wouldn't say normal anymore, mm. but um, that was what was more familiar. Yeah, and yeah, it's right. developed it's, 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 to like, it's like cricket where the T20 now, the sevens is, yes. you know, right? But are the rules the same? Um, they're Basically. similar, but it's a very different style of play. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Even up till last week, my coach was telling me something and mm -hmm. kind of opened my eyes to understand something I could improve on. Okay. Where I was still doing flanker 15s. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't what I needed to do in 7s. Okay. And, you know, he took a moment and spoke to me about it. And the explanation, I was kind of like, oh. Because I'm here running like crazy, thinking I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. But it actually was counterproductive because I was taking myself out of the play and I wasn't necessarily ensuring that they couldn't continue to play the ball, the opponent. Okay. Um, so there's definitely been, for me, a learning curve um, coming from that one job that I used to have in 15s to being a sevens player, a lot more fitness is involved. You need to be a more dynamic player because with seven players on the same size pitch, mm -hmm. There are going to be times when you're in every position. Mm -hmm. You do have your positions that you play, yeah. but once it's open play on the field, you have to be able to adapt and you have to be able to do what needs to be done where you're standing at the time. Okay. Now, I know that you all are preparing for a major tournament in Mexico. Yes. Right? Tell me about this tournament. Tell me about your training schedule, when you all are going to be leaving, and tell me a bit more about the tournament. Who are some of the teams? you know, that's going to be in this tournament, and who are your biggest threats? All right, so the RAN 7s mm -hmm. for this year is being held in Mexico. Mm -hmm. It is a huge tournament this year mm -hmm. because it is the qualifier for the Commonwealth Games, the Rugby 7s World Cup, mm -hmm. the CAC Games, as well as the champion of that tournament would have the opportunity to be invited to other international sevens so like the hong kong sevens las vegas sevens canada has sevens there's mm -hmm. tons of sevens going on all mm -hmm. over and you'll have the opportunity to be invited to these tournaments okay. so who are some of the countries going to be involved in that tournament uh caribbean countries so no, no, rugby uh, america's it, it, north it, yeah right mm -hmm. rugby america's north is the host of the tournament mm -hmm. and they include canada usa mexico and all of the caribbean countries mm -hmm. Um, RAN also hosts a TENS tournament for women because in the Caribbean, we don't really have enough people at the moment to be playing 15s. Mm -hmm. So we play 10s. Okay. And I know a lot of countries opted to save their resources and their trainings and mm -hmm. prepare for this tournament. Okay. So we're going to have a very good showing mm -hmm. of countries. It's going to be a very exciting tournament. Now, in the Caribbean, who mm -hmm. are the leaders in rugby? I would say Trinidad and Tobago. We are the leaders in rugby right now in the Caribbean. Right. Yes. Now, you all are going to this tournament and you're going to be meeting international um, competitors. Mm -hmm. Who are some of the international competitors that you feel that is going to give you all the hardest games? We have a... Or the country um, that you all have must beat in order to qualify. We have some rivalry with Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, so, we, we don't want them to beat us at all. But you, you, um, you, all, you all ever um, play together? Um, you all ever against them? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, and yes, yes. For, for, yeah, for, for even the, before I was playing rugby. And how was the, mm -hmm. the outcome in those games? Um, in the sevens, we actually, the sevens tournament was held in Trinidad and Tobago last year, mm -hmm. this time. And we beat them in one game and they beat us in one game. Okay. So, you know, it's, Sometimes neck and neck. Mm -hmm. It's really about keeping our composure mm -hmm. because we definitely have the capability to do what we need to do. In the tens tournament this year, we actually were the champions. Okay. So we were the runner-up last mm -hmm. year. 
we came out victorious this year. Mm -hmm. And that's definitely put some eyes on us. People are saying, okay, all right, Trinidad is, is winning. They're coming to win again. And we're definitely a team to contend with. What's this training schedule like presently now as you prepare for this major tournament? Well, our training schedule, we have our regular training days on Mondays and Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. We train in the President's Grounds in St. Anne's, mm -hmm. as well as sometimes Hazy Crawford Stadium. We do try and move our training sessions around a little bit to accommodate, obviously, it's a national team. It's not just one area of the yeah. country where we have players. Mm -hmm. um, we also entered in the Police Sevens, Sevens tournament as the national team against the under-19 men. Okay, so you appeared against the men? Yes. So Who won that game? Well, we did not win that game. Okay. But the experience is good because mm -hmm. it's obviously the strength and the speed yes, and yeah, the intensity yeah. that the mm -hmm. game is played at. Mm -hmm. We want to prepare ourselves for what we will meet mm -hmm. internationally. Mm -hmm. And I think it was a really good decision to give us more playing time. As I mentioned before, mm -hmm. getting competitive games is difficult because basically you have to travel. Yeah. And travel yeah. is expensive. Yeah. And they're not, they're not going to bring any game, uh, any teams out to um, give you a practice game, so you'll have to take whatever you are getting. Right. right. So I think it's good. I think, you know, we do have resources here. Mm. Sometimes it may not be the resources that you think of first off, mm. but where there's a will, there's a way, and you use what you have when you have it, and you make the most of it. But do you think that's a kind of hindrance to you not getting much, when I say much fitness, I mean, Yes, you played against the under-19 mm -hmm. men's team, but actually getting a good practice game with a foreign team. Absolutely. That, um, a bit of a Definitely. thing for you. In past years, there have been warm-up tournaments. Mm -hmm. um, however, the financial climate right now mm -hmm. is such that <laughs> we're concerned about making sure that we go to tournaments. And we're very fortunate right now that you know, our stakeholders, like, um, turn on to big Olympic committee, sport TT, if it wasn't for them, mm -hmm. all this excitement that I have right now, yeah, um, it yeah, it would be a different face I'd be wearing. So we have to be so grateful for, um, the contributors to making sure that we make these qualifying tournaments. Uh, however, we're looking to diversify where our funds come from, okay. right? Mm -hmm. Grants have been cut across the board. This yeah, is not we, something yeah, that yeah, only yeah, we, Trinidad yeah. and Tobago is yeah, experiencing. Mm -hmm. It's not something that only rugby is experiencing. And we definitely need to diversify. Right now, all of the national players have donation cards. So um, to find a national player. Back to the old days. Yes. When sports will always you'll have a donation sheet. Yes, or donation a, sheet. Or a raffle sheet. And you right on the ground. Yeah, if yeah. it's $5 you have to yeah. give, give your $5. We're mm -hmm. taking it. Mm -hmm. If you can donate more, that's great. Mm -hmm. Um, we're doing this to raise funds for this tournament, but as I mentioned, this is a qualifier for, what, about three major tournaments. Mm -hmm. It could be five tournaments next year. Mm -hmm. So we definitely need to raise a lot of money to be able to reap the benefits of winning this tournament. How prepared is the team going to this major tournament, knowing that a win in this tournament could get open a lot of doors for you all for major tournaments? How are you all ready? Are you all still a bit off? I mean, what, what areas of the, the game that uh, the coach and the players itself still have a little work to, to, to do? Um, well, gameplay, that is basically mm -hmm. where we don't have the opportunity to play as many games. Mm -hmm. However, we are playing with our clubs. So right now, because we're in seven season, mm -hmm. national players are playing sevens with their clubs. Okay. So they are getting so game getting experience. Yeah, it, okay. They're getting the match experience. Mm -hmm. It just may not be as a national team. And our coaches have really focused in our training sessions when we're working together, where you see they're trying different combinations of players. They're, they're taking the time, like I said, even with me, they're explaining things, saying, what, what is our focus for this session? Mm -hmm. How are we going to retain this and then move forward with this for the next session? And taking out exercises, drills, scenarios, so that we can do those at the highest level in training mm -hmm. and well we can try it out with our clubs when we're playing in the sevens tournaments mm -hmm. um and we play each other we have a good number of mm -hmm. athletes out now which is excellent it's really motivating uh, a lot of our younger athletes so our under 19s mm -hmm. have been coming out and joining us for training mm -hmm. sessions 
we sent an um, under 18s, I believe it was for Commonwealth. Yes, I remember that. Yeah. Right. So that was the first time that they've been in the Commonwealth. That was a huge milestone again. And having those girls come out and, and train with us, mm -hmm. I love it personally. I think it's really motivating. Mm -hmm. I love that they have the opportunity to see where the pathway can take them. Mm -hmm. And it's good for senior players as well because that's the future right there. So, you know, if you want to hold your position, yes. you need to make sure that they're coming and they're going to be competitive. We want to train them so they can be even better players mm -hmm. than we are now. And we want to open doors for them so that they have every opportunity. Now, being the honorary secretary of the Trinidad Tobago Rugby Union, you can talk on behalf of the Rugby um, Association. I right? can. I just have to change hats. All right. Okay. Well, you change your hat <laughs> now. Um, is rugby a growing sport in Trinidad Tobago? Yes. And in what way would you assume that? We're growing as far as our youth development. Okay. So in the senior leagues, we're still um, sometimes difficult to get numbers, mm -hmm. maintaining fixtures, things beyond our control also yes, affect okay. it. So okay. getting to Tobago mm -hmm. right now for our well, whole it's, season. It's, it's not only sports that don't cargo Tobago, it's everybody cargo Tobago. Right? Exactly. But yeah. you know, mm -hmm. you're looking at games, games are canceling because of that. You can't get players across and okay. things like that. So there have been a lot of obstacles. Mm -hmm. However, the development of youth mm -hmm. is definitely coming up. Okay. The schoolgirls um, are doing an excellent job, Kwanis John. Um, they've been having festivals. So they have festivals in different areas around Trinidad and Tobago. So there's also a school league, right? There's the school, okay. there's schools league, which mm -hmm. develops youth, and there's also the YDO program, which is youth development officers. Okay. Right? They go to different communities or something like that. Is there a community-based yes. league or community-based training um, so they're, we're doing some restructuring with the YDO program, mm -hmm. which will encourage more community-based involvement. Mm -hmm. Right now, they're um, very much affiliated with clubs. So that will continue, but there will also be um, more encouragement to go out into the community mm -hmm. and reach players that we haven't been reaching and establish new clubs as well. Okay. All right. Now, when we look at sports in general in Trinidad and Tobago, mm. we normally see a handful of spectators at the games itself. Yeah. But if there's a national game or if there's a chance that whatever sport it is is on the brink of some major tournament, we see the half a Trinidad and Tobago coming out. Mm -hmm. And when the team goes, if they win, then the whole of Trinidad and Tobago yes. comes out. Is that the same with rugby? Are you all seen a, a, a great support base by way of spectators coming out to games and, and things like that? It's similar in rugby. Mm -hmm. You can say for the RAN 7s last year, mm -hmm. um, we had hoped for better results. But personally for me, it was such an incredible experience because, mm -hmm. you know, say it would be harder playing in front of a home crowd, but I thought it was the greatest experience ever. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're feeling out of breath, tired, when you hear somebody scream your name at the sideline, mm -hmm. you, have to, you have to dig deeper and find more. You have to keep pushing harder and harder. Mm -hmm. And to see how the community came out and supported our national teams um, on the sidelines, cheering us on, mm -hmm. it was just even social media, all of those kind of things. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was so amazing and inspiring. And so that's the experience I had as a player. And as Secretary of the Union, I know that we have this resource. Mm -hmm. I know we have this energy. I know we have this love for this sport. I know we have the capability mm -hmm. of pushing each other and being there for each other. And it just comes into tapping into it in ways that, that are productive and, and meaningful to everyone involved. Mm -hmm. So it comes down to a lot of marketing. Mm -hmm. I think that rugby is amazing to watch. I yeah. think it's tons of fun. But as far as fulfilling fixtures, mm -hmm. If people come out to a game and you couldn't fulfill the fixture, yeah. then that's, you know, people aren't going to think about coming out next time. Mm -hmm. Facilities, where are the fixtures mm -hmm. being held, mm -hmm. right? A lot of our games are played in the Queen's Park Savannah, which is excellent because we have lots of pitches. We can play lots of games, mm -hmm. tons of action. However, what facilities are we using? You know, are you going to invite a whole family out and, you know, there aren't washrooms? Are there going to, is there somewhere to have mm -hmm. concessions, food, drinks, all of these different things? So those are the major obstacles, if you'll call it that, that is hindering the sport from proper growth. 
yes, from what I can see, mm -hmm. we have the community, we have love of the sport, we have people who would, you know, go out of their way to make sure and be there, bring other people. Um, but we, you need to know that you're coming for something. So not only making sure that we have appropriate facilities and things like that, mm -hmm. we've, we've started using some of the stadia a little bit more, mm -hmm. um, but also media coverage. A lot of times, you know, if people don't see it online, it's not promoted enough, yeah. Yeah. then it's difficult. Um, we're working to get a stronger media presence so that's working with different um, television stations, newspapers. Mm -hmm. We have some very loyal people who always come out. They come to our press releases mm -hmm. and they make sure that, you know, the story gets out somehow. Mm -hmm. And that's very appreciated. But we also have to do more on our part to say, um, like a match sheet, for example, mm -hmm. you know, who is our top scorer? You're going to yeah. ask, that's yeah. a question you could ask. If mm -hmm. you don't have the answer to that, well, that's not something that you can promote. Mm -hmm and getting more of those stats, those details, mm -hmm. and, and that will attract people to, to follow online, to get this information, and then to come out and see. You know, if you know this person always scores tries, you're going to come to watch them score mm -hmm. try in, in real life. Okay, we need to take our final break, but when we come back, we want to talk a bit about um, what goals you have set for yourself, uh, how long you'll be playing rugby again for, and maybe we can touch a bit about some of the tournaments that will become the local legs um, tournaments that will be coming up after the major tournament in Mexico. Sure. Okay? The US will be right back after the short break. My name is Emmanuel Joseph and I am training for Round 7. Jarim George and I am training for Round 7. My name is Abula Silverton and I'm training for Round 7. My name is Victoria Callis and I'm training for Round 7. My name is Chantal Charles and I am training for Round 7s. Hi, Gedi, my name is Akola O'Brien and I'm training for Round 7s. My name is Blossom Stewart and I'm training for Round 7s. My name is Marika Mendes and I'm training for Round 7s. My name is Michael Cipio and I'm training for Round 7s. My name is Akim Liam and I'm training for Round 7s. My name is Maria Thomas and I am training for Round 7s. Welcome to the new season of Football in 101. I am your host, Joshua DeMatos. Well, it's time for your weekly football news update. Hello, me, Messi. Unfortunately, uh, Max. Ki kiss the badge, kiss the badge. Oh, oh. What's that? Welcome to this edition of the interview. And as you can see, I'm not alone on the set. I have Marcus, a Liverpool fan, and I have Shakira. Welcome back, viewers. Welcome back to Scoreboard here on ACTN. We are speaking with Maria Thomas, Trinidad Tobago national rugby player. Maria, we talk a lot about the sport of rugby, but let's talk about Maria itself in the sport. How many years do you see yourself being in the sport? And in that space of time, what goals have you set for yourself to achieve in the sport of rugby? Well, as mentioned earlier, I did have an injury mm -hmm. that I came back from. So at that so point, three years of your career was inactive. Right. And I and I really, as I said, I wanted to come and train with the national team. Mm -hmm. And that has developed into something greater than I had even hoped for. Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful for that. Um, for now, I want to continue playing rugby as long as I can. I love playing rugby. What's the age limit like in rugby? What, as a, what age can one, uh, well, I know you can only talk for, for the female uh, version, but what, at what age? Well, within Trinidad and Tobago, mm -hmm. I'm up there. <laughs> okay, we won't we go for that. I'm up there. Yeah. Um, internationally, though, yeah, yeah. You know, people my age are still playing rugby, still competitive, still okay. doing amazing things. And I, I look at them and I say, see, I have, I have no excuse. I can continue training. Um, mm. The more I'm able to train, mm. the the more assistance I have from coaches, even teammates that just mm. push you and, and really love, make you strive to be a best. Major, major injury. So, I mean, you know, sometimes in sports, injury curtails a person yes. a length of time, mm -hmm. right? And you don't have anything no. like that. Right. So. I don't have any of those things. So, mm. <clears throat> preventative is, is always the best. Mm. So, the better I train, I won't mm. say the harder. Mm -hmm. um, Smokey, mm -hmm. he has... He has taught me that rest is a part of training. Mm -hmm. um, the better I train, the longer I will be able to do this. Okay. And I would love to continue training as long as I can. Even if I'm not selected for tours, mm. I think it's important when you have a team that there's 
there's a good seam. Mm -hmm. So when the newer players are coming in, that they're coming and joining a team where they have guidance, yes, yes, they have yes. you know players to the look up to, they have the that experience, yes, yes. and that they can take comfort in that and have people to even you know tell them you know you're doing a great job mm -hmm. to push them. Try this a different way. Mm -hmm. Don't let me outrun you. I have 15 years on you. You know, <laughs> anything to make them, mm -hmm. you know, really work. And I think that makes you us a stronger soak it team. In when you outrun somebody younger than you. Pardon me. Do, do you soak it in on the players? I, like, do, I I don't really have the um the extra energy to be soaking while I'm outrunning anyone. Oh, okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. You know, it's almost, it's almost like the, when we do something against somebody that's younger than us, we try to rub it in. You know. I think for me. I, I do notice mm -hmm. and it just motivates me a little bit more because yeah, yeah. I don't think in my head that I can outrun these people. Mm. Um, <clears throat> that's something that mentally I have to work on mm -hmm. because I will just think I am not a fast runner um, and then I just wouldn't run because I think I can't run. And I hear people telling me that all the time, like, no, go, stop, like, just, just run. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that's something with the home advantage as well. I'm a person, if I'm on the field and if I just hear somebody scream, Maria, just run, mm -hmm, you run. I will just run. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm thinking about it, I'll be like, okay, where are our runners? Let me pass this to a runner. Mm -hmm. So it's something that helps me So the me position to you play, you don't necessarily have to do much running. Oh, it's sevens. We all have to run. Okay, okay. <laughs> because it's less people on the field. Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah, fewer people, everyone's running. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm not... A winger. a winger is probably one of our faster mm -hmm. players, but there is definitely, we have props that run the whole field and, and score tries. Really, really amazing to see. Mm -hmm. It's very exciting. Mm -hmm. um, I would say I'm probably more of a defensive player. Okay. Um, I like to have my job to do. So when those things are set out, I would say, all right. So propping, um, I really enjoy propping actually. Uh, that's what I started doing when I came to the national team. I've also been training as hooker mm -hmm. um, because I'm kind of little now. <laughs> so uh, I've, been, I've been working at that, which I like as well. Mm -hmm. um, I really enjoyed having the opportunity to play both positions in the tournament at mm -hmm. Police Sevens mm -hmm. because it gave me a chance to test out something that I thought I would be capable of doing, mm -hmm. as well as when I went back into the prop position um, I kind of realized that short time away, I was like, no, I really, I really love being a prop as well. Mm -hmm. So that front row is a really nice way for me when you're starting out the game because, you know, you have the call and, and that when you engage, it's like, okay, time's on, you know, you're right in it. Um, that's something that kind of helps kind of just put you into the mode of the game and get your head into it because you have that. I, I like rugby because it's a contact sport. Mm -hmm. um, so that contact is what kind of flips a switch and you're in game mode. When your career has come to an end, will we see Maria continue in the sport of rugby or will we see Maria in the sport of women's boxing? <laughs> yes, I have been going to women's boxing. Um, is it I, because it's a physical sport too? Yes. Mm. Yes. I love to be very active. Um, I like to stay training. I like to challenge myself. Um, I feel like it's good therapy to, to do those things. And I think that it's important um, even for society to recognize that not all violence is necessarily bad. Not all things that we think are fine are not mm -hmm. violence. Um, you're seeing right now so many things going on and sometimes I feel like if you could just say okay here's the place and time to do this mm -hmm. all right um, these are the measures that we'll take to make sure that you're safe that your opponent is safe come bring that get it out here um, maybe we wouldn't see so much violence in other places it also teaches a lot of respect okay. I find especially in women's rugby you can't just walk down the street and find a woman who's like, sure, let's hit each other. Mm. You know, that's, <laughs> it's not going to happen. They could do it on the field. You know, but you go on the field but I and see, you have that. And I that's see, a gift that I each see, player gives each other. I see in rugby, some women's uh, games, sometimes you see some huge ladies. Yes. How do you all make up when these ladies dive on you all with all this weight? 
Well, I think that's the beauty of rugby, that there are positions that everyone can come and play. Mm -hmm. Everyone has something that's valuable. I mean, someone who has that size might not have speed, but they might draw in three, four players trying mm -hmm. to get them down. If you work on your techniques, everybody's got ankles. Ankles can only get so big. Mm -hmm. So if you get low enough, you can bring down anyone. Mm -hmm. But once you're playing the sport, you have made a decision. That's mm -hmm. something that you want to do. I want to be on the field. Mm -hmm. So there's no one who I could say, I mean, there, there are people, I, you know, I know they hit hard. I know that, <laughs> you know, I'm going to get, I'm going to feel it for yeah, sure. Yeah. But I made the decision to be there. Mm -hmm. So there isn't anyone that I would say, I don't want that person to hit me. Or I could never be upset that somebody hit me. Mm -hmm. Because I went there and I expect that the opponents feel the same way. Yeah. I'm going to do my best to take you out during the game and you're going to do your best to take me out during the game. Yeah. And after that, yeah. we're going to lime. We're going to congratulate each other on yeah. the awesome tackles we made, the good breaks, yeah. the steps, whatever it was, yeah. you know. And, and we're going to celebrate and we're going to appreciate each other and the gift that we've given each, given each other in being able to play this sport. Okay. For the viewers who are viewing the program, right, um, let's talk a bit before we end the program about the local tournaments because I know that when you all come back from Mexico, there are some local tournaments that's going to be taking place. So yes. um, tell us, you know, in a nutshell where we can go, um, even to see the national team train, you know, when you all leaving for Mexico. Um, I believe it will either be the 22nd or the 23rd. Right, so maybe you can tell us where the team will be so if there are people who will want to see the team practice before they leave. Give us that information. The team is training in President's Grounds mm -hmm. in St. Anne's. That happens on Mondays and Wednesdays from 5 o'clock. Okay. So we have, I really like our training sessions right now, actually. I've mm. been having a lot of fun. They're quite dynamic. Mm. Um, we do really good warm-ups. Uh, we work on specific tactics that we want to do, and mm. then we finish off with more fitness. And it, we've really been digging deep and I like being able to see and watch players who I know at the, even in September, mm -hmm. we're not at the level they're at now. Okay. And we see a lot of very rapid progress, which I think is inspiring. We also have um, a tournament before we go, okay. two well, tournaments. Yeah. This weekend is the Rainbow Sports and Culture Club tournament in mm -hmm. Manny Ramjohn Stadium. Mm -hmm. And that will take place Saturday and Sunday this weekend. What time? Uh, the tournament is likely to start by 10 o'clock, okay. both days. Mm -hmm. The following weekend, which is the 18th and 19th, mm -hmm. is the UE sevens tournament that, that will take up as you respect yes you respect you saint augustine mm -hmm. and same thing saturday and sunday for that mm -hmm. tournament mm -hmm. then we have a week off mm -hmm. as mexico is is happening mm -hmm. and then we return the third the weekend of the third is harvard sevens mm -hmm. and that will take place at cic grounds mm -hmm. uh, basically that, might, that that's going to be end of the season or um or you're still that'll right be the last sevens tournament for the season mm -hmm. so other clubs so harvard's has an old versus young mm -hmm. Caribs, which has a, a Boxing Day run, Enthusiasts mm -hmm. have a run. So different clubs will still be mm -hmm. coming out, sweating, mm -hmm. enjoying seasonal festivities and things. Uh, so as a community, we really, we really stick together. Even though the season is ending, mm -hmm. um, you'll see where different programs will go, where they'll have off-season training. Um, some clubs diversify their training at that time. The 15s program will be training as well because they have games earlier in the season mm -hmm. and um, our fixtures committee will be working to get our fixtures out early so that we can make sure that we, everyone can schedule it and know mm -hmm. when and where they can come and see rugby next year will you be getting the coaching after your career has come to an end um into coaching i've actually been partaking in some coaching courses so okay. um i intend to continue that because i think it's it's good information to have um it depends on where the need is. I will go wherever I'm most needed. So mm -hmm. right now, I'm seeing administration is something way bigger than probably most people think it is. Mm -hmm. It's so important. Um, we're fortunate that we have a secretariat that actually assists us with all of our admi administration work. Mm -hmm. um, anyone that wants to contact the TTRFU can do so at contact at TTRFU.com. Mm -hmm. And... That's sort of our hub for all our information. We have a number of committees, disciplinary committee, referee society, fixtures committee, um, 14 different clubs, schools union, all of these developmental programs and established clubs that work together to make sure that TTRFU is what it is. Mm -hmm. um, you'll find little details that 
you don't think about because as a player mm -hmm. you go and you show up on the day yeah. and and you play but even if you think about what affects you as a player if you show up and the tournament doesn't start on time because i mean if you're playing a contact sport you might not want to eat right before you play yeah but you definitely need to have some fuel in your body so you're timing your food mm -hmm. so you know if, if an ambulance wasn't arranged yeah, it throws you off. and you have yeah. to wait two hours now mm -hmm. That's a two-hour gap in your in your food plan. So, I know I like food a lot, and a lot of other rugby players do. So we don't like when our food plan is thrown off. So if Maria gets the chance to be the president of the Trinidad Rugby Union, those are things you're going to change. Um, or try to there are things that there are things that are already being worked on, and okay. our president right now, Leslie Figaro, is mm -hmm. has been working like crazy, making sure that we can pull off this tournament in Mexico. Mm -hmm. Um, right now, and those things are already underway. And so I you think have already received funding and everything. It's just a matter of you're leaving, or you're still in what areas you are still need um, assistance. We still are raising funds. Okay. So the national team, we have donation cards, like I said. Mm -hmm. um, anyone who's interested in making a donation, or even beyond a donation, we want to set up partnerships. Okay. So how can we work together with a business, um, a product, so that we can also promote. Mm -hmm. We want to have more people coming out to see rugby. We want more people seeing your brand. Um, and we can build that as a community because we really want to see rugby as something that everyone in Trinidad and Tobago is aware of. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to hear people saying, oh, women play rugby in Trinidad and Tobago? Yes, we mm -hmm. won an international tournament in mm -hmm. July, you know? Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're doing really amazing things. And I think that we can grow as as a rugby community and as the general population of Trinidad, we can we can work together to grow and help with our funding. So we'll have more opportunities so we can go to all our tournaments next year and it'll be it'll be really spectacular. I know you said just getting the train with the national team was something you wanted. Yes. But looking back at your career, what what moment have you cherished the most since playing on a national team and being involved in rugby? I would say that there are little moments. Mm -hmm. There are little moments when one of my teammates will ask me why I'm not grunting. Mm -hmm. um, and just being aware that I have teammates that observe those things about me and, mm -hmm. and care enough about me to say, okay, Maria's not doing what she normally does. Mm -hmm. Let's just ask her a question and see, you know, is she okay? Mm -hmm. Um, or is she trying something new or what is it? Um, let's say, you know, if they, if they saw that I wasn't running as hard or, or anything that they would notice about me, um, congratulating me when I come and berate myself about every single thing that I did wrong when I come off the field, which is, you know, what I always do. And they'll be like, but Maria, you didn't have a bad game. Or, or they'll say, okay, they'll pick out something. Even if it was the only good thing I did, mm -hmm. they'll pick that out and remind okay. me of that. And that is so motivating to me and it makes me want to try harder. It makes me want to, you know, not let them down, make them proud. Coaches that I've had, the same thing, you know. They look out and I, and I see them and I know they're watching and you just think, you know, don't trip and fall before the try, li try line. Mm -hmm. um, and those things really motivate me and I think that, that's the most important thing and that's what I love about rugby so much. Okay. Before we wrap, any closing comments? Like to share with us. In closing, I would just invite everyone to come find a rugby game, find a national player. We're trying to be easier to find now. Um, you can check us out on Facebook at Trinidad and Tobago Rugby Football Union. We also have um, a website which we're looking into um, updating as well. But right now on Facebook, we have all the information for our tournaments that are happening. We've had a lot of help from photographers. Trinidad and Tobago event photography has been at a lot of mm -hmm. our events. Yeah, I've seen a lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they've yeah. been doing an awesome job of promoting mm -hmm. women's rugby. Um, check us out on Facebook. It's very interactive. You can send us a message. You can interact with the photos and things that are there. Um, come and try out rugby. Come and play. Um, definitely, there's, there's a way for everyone to be involved. Maria, it was a pleasure. And let me wish you all the best as Thank you, you so much. in your career. And we hope that you all could come back from Mexico uh, with good news. Thank you so much. Viewers, we have come to the end of another edition here of Scoreboard here on ACTN. We are speaking to Maria Thomas, a uh, national player with the Trent Tobago Rugby team, telling us all about her career and enlightening you all about the sport of rugby. We hope that you have enjoyed this program. If you miss any part of this program, there is a repeat tomorrow from 1 p.m. So we hope that you will stay locked on to ACTN. And we hope that you will support um, 
rugby in Trinidad and Tobago, especially women's rugby. And as you heard Maria say, if you want to try it, come out. I wouldn't be trying it though. <laughs> See you next week, Tuesday, same channel, same time. You have a blessed week ahead. Mm.